Hi students, welcome to exercise 23, log logarithmic function and logarithms. So this is our first introduction to logarithms. Uh, what we need to understand is what they come from and what their use is. So the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay, so the exponential function is y equals b to the power of x, so base to the power of variable x, right? And what the log function is, is the inverse of that. So if I was to switch the x and y, you get the inverse function. Okay, and that comes back from what we did at the beginning of the year. So now, notice that the y value is now an exponent. And we always write an, an equation, y equals. So when we write a function, we write y equals to something. Okay, so in order to lower this y back down, we use the logarithm function. So what we do is we take the log of both sides, basically. We'll talk about that later. But you end up getting this function. So this function here and that function are equal to each other. So this and this are the same. This is in terms of y, and this would be obviously in terms of x. So in terms of y, you get log base b. So notice the b here. So log base b of x, where we call b the base of the log. So notice that this is subscript. Okay, so it's log base subscript x. Um, we call y the logarithm, so y is the logarithm. Um, often we call that the answer as well. And I'll probably mention that a few times, or equal to. And then x is the argument. Okay, so we call the value inside the log here the argument. Okay, well, let's take a look at the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x and its inverse. So y equals 2 to the power of x, we've sketched that before. Right, we're going to pass by the point 0, 1, go point here, and the point 1, 2. And we have the exponential function here. So it goes up, and we have the asymptote right here, right? Okay, so that's our exponential function. Now the inverse, right? The inverse here, so I didn't want to scratch it out. So the inverse um, is, well, you flip all the x and y values, if you remember that. So the point 0, 1 becomes the point 1, 0. The point 2, 1, 2 becomes the point 2, 1. And the graph we get... So we got this point, we got this point. And notice that if we switch all the x and y values, this y equals 0 asymptote becomes x equals 0 asymptote. So the asymptote's here, and you get this function. Again, it's a perfect reflection of the y equals x line. Okay, so this is the inverse of this function. We call this inverse function the log function. So this would be log equals, sorry, y equals the log base 2 of x. So that's the graph of this function. So again, this is the inverse of your exponential 2 to the power of x. Okay, so here we have an expression uh, in terms of m and n uh, of an exponential function. I'd like to describe this function in the logarithmic form. Okay, so if you remember, I'm just going to rewrite what we wrote earlier. We'd have, we had um, x equals to b to exponent y, right? Okay, so that's kind of the shape we have here. And we turned this expression here into um, y equals to log base b of x. So that's what we're going to do to this. This is an exponential function that represents this, and I want to turn it into that. So notice the n becomes our value, n equals, this is our log, and then you have log base b, so base 4 of m. So it doesn't look like a 4. Clean that up. So that's that. Okay, simple as that. So if I want to change this into a log function, you take the base, that stays the same. The n, the exponent, becomes the equals to Right, that's what, that the value we call that the log, and m is your argument. Okay, so same idea, except this time I'm giving you the log expression. I want to turn that into exponential form. So notice your two is your base. So two is your base. The three is the exponent, or uh, equals two. Same thing. So two to the power of three, and all of that is equal to eight. And that's an expression we should know. 
Okay, so that should make sense in that expression because 2 to the power of 3 does equal to 8. All right, evaluate the following expressions. So to evaluate the following expressions, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make them all equal to x. So I'm going to say that's equal to x. I'm trying to solve that. That's equal to x. And notice that this one's already equal to x. We can leave that alone. Okay, well, to evaluate this, I'm going to put it in exponential form. So I'm going to put 2 to the power of x equals to the argument. So 2 to the power of x equals to the argument. Well, now we're going back to exercise 22, and I can just change the base of both of those to 2 to the power of x equals to 2 to the power of 4, and therefore x is equal to 4. So that means this expression here, the value is 4. Same idea on the second one. So I'm going to go 2 to the power of x equals to 1 quarter. Okay, I'm going to change this to a base of 2. So 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of negative 2. Okay, and therefore x is equal to negative 2. All right, not too, not too bad. Okay, and the next one. Again, same idea. We have base 3 to the power of x equals to negative 27. So 3 to the power of x equals negative 27. Well, notice this is impossible, actually, because 3 to the power of anything, doesn't matter what it is, will never give you a negative number. Even if you have a negative exponent, it just means it's 1 over 3 to the power of whatever. So this is impossible. So there is no solution. You cannot evaluate here. So let's write that. Log base 3 of negative 27 cannot be evaluated. And do I have a little note here? There we go. But let's get to the note. This is the reasoning why this cannot be. Therefore, we can say that if we have a log base b a equals c, there's a, first, a couple of restrictions here. The base, okay, the base, we're always going to have a base that's positive because in the exp exponential function, you always want the base to be positive. So b has got to be larger than zero. The argument, the value here, since we have base to the power of something, will always give you a positive value. The argument a has to be also positive. And we're going to say that the base cannot be 1. So again, back to your exponential function. If you had 1 to the power of something, well, that'll always give you 1. So that'll always be a constant function. Okay. So the base, right? Let's go back to here. The base b cannot equal to, to 1. Has to be positive. And the same thing for the argument. The argument has to be positive. Okay, so note the base of the logarithm cannot be negative. That's what this is saying. And the argument A, or in this case here, is always positive as well. Okay, on our last page, uh, something to note. Sometimes you will, you will be written a log function without a base. So when the base is not indicated, this means that there is a base of 10. So for example, if it just says log X, this would be the same thing as saying log base 10 of X. Okay, so in every other case, the log, the base will be written um, for logs. And uh, if the base is not written, it's a 10. Okay, so here, find the value of x. So I'm still evaluating here. So I'm looking for x. Notice that x is not the value of the expression. It's inside, it's the argument. But we're still going to do the exact same thing to find the value of x. I'm going to put it in exponential function. So I'm going to write base 16 to the power of 3 quarters equals to x. So now what I have to do is evaluate 16 to the power of 3 quarters. So this is going back to grade, I think, 10 pre-cal, um, where you have to change the base to get rid of that exponent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it apart into two pieces, this exponent. I'm going to make it a power of 3 and a power of 1 quarter, and do one thing at a time. And I'm, in general, you can always do the quarter, the, the fraction first and then the numerator. So the denominator before the numerator. So I'm going to write it as 16 to the power of 1 quarter, all that to the power of 3. Okay, so notice that 3 times 1 quarter gives you 3 quarters. So I haven't changed anything. And now what you can do is you can actually perform 16 to the power of 1 quarter because the fourth root of 16 is 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. 
So you have 2 to the power of 3 equals to x, and obviously that is 8. So here, log base 16 of 8 is equal to 3 quarters. So the argument is 8. All right, over here. So now I have, I want to find again the value of the log, but notice that there's two functions. So we're going to start inside first. So I'm going to first evaluate log base 3 of 81. So I'm going to start with, okay, well, we need to know what the log base 3 of 81 is. And I'm going to make that equal to y. So I'm going to, I'm going to find the value of this expression first. And we're going to go 3 to the power of y equals 81. I know 3 to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 4. And therefore, y equals to 4. Perfect. So I've found that the value of this is 4. So I'm going to plug this value in here. And what I'm going to get is log base 2 of 4 equals to x. And I'm going to start over. And now say exponential. 2 to the power of x equals to 4. And therefore, x is equal to 2. I think you guys can see that. 4 is 2 to the power of 2, therefore x equals to 2. Okay, so that's the value of this expression. So log base 2 of log base 3 of 81 is 2. All right, last part. Estimate the following values. So now I, these are values that are exact, okay? But they're really close to values that we could figure out. So for example, log base 2 of 30. Again, we're going to make this equal to x, so I'm going to find a value of x. Okay. Well, I know that 2 to the power of 4 gives me 16, correct? And I also know 2 to the power of 5 gives me 32. And don't forget, you go 2 to the power of x equals 30. Okay, so 2 base exponent equals 2 argument. Okay, so I know that 2 to the power of, hmm, let's say 4.9 equals approximately 30. So it'll be really close to 5, right? Because if it's 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 4.9-ish is 30. So we can therefore say x is approximately equal to eh, 4.9. Right? So I'm saying that this is approximately equal to 4.9. That's an estimation. Okay, same thing here. Notice that there is no base given here, which means it's a base of 10. So again, I'm going to make this equal to x just to make it a little easier to write it down. I know that 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So 10 to the power of x... Um, no, I'm not going to write x, sorry. I'm going to write 10 to the power of what gives me 20. So 10 to the power of what gives me approximately 20. Well, I hope you're saying 1.1 or 1.2 in that range. 1.1 I'd accept, obviously, as well. I think those are both good estimations. So therefore, x is approximately equals to... Sorry, that didn't come out very approximative. So approximately equal to 1.2. All right, last one. I hope you guys can see the pattern. So it's 5 to the power of what gives me 120. Well, I know that 5 to the power of 3 gives me 125. So I know that it'll be a little less than 3 because 5 to the power of 2 point something will give me 120. So I'm going to approximate this as about 2.9 because it's a little less than 3. All right, guys, that's it for uh, 23. Uh, good luck, and we'll see each other in class.